There's a sign just in the lobby, just outside the House of Commons, where we all all group to do our strategy thing, and it it says, "Work hard, have fun, and an, annoy a liberal." Look out, Ottawa Beaver River, sending you a surprise, and yeah. uh, <laughs> and she'll always be the uh, member from Beaver R River, even if it is Edmonton North now. Ingrid and I uh, recall very well our first introduction to Deborah Gray. We were by chance. Uh, discussing the possibility of uh, Preston, the leader of our Reform Party, running in the Beaver River by-election in 1989. We happened to be at their house at that time. And Preston said very clear to us, no, I can't run in that constituency because I have their, uh, we have a great candidate up there. Her name is Deborah Gray and she is going to run. Well, again, Preston Manning was right. It was the right candidate, the right person. And it's such a pleasure to have her with us here tonight. Thank you for coming. Good. Well, thank you very much. Part of that was true, but I'll let you figure out which part. <laughs> That's great. Well, this is really fun for me. Uh, uh, many of you remember that I was here in the spring of 1993, and Lou and I were about to get married. We weren't just sure when, though. Uh, we knew that we were at the point where we wanted to get married sooner, probably rather than later, at age 41. I mean, how much longer should you put it off when you finally meet somebody? And, uh, of course, Kim Campbell came in in June of 1993, and we weren't sure whether she was going to call the election right away or later. And it turned out that she was going to be on the summer barbecue circuit. And so we got engaged on my birthday, my 41st birthday on the 1st of July. And as Ray said, married on the 7th of August, 1993. And of course, the campaign came along there. So no wonder we had to put off our honeymoon. <laughs> we ended up going to Florida later that winter and just had a wonderful time. Uh, Ray also mentioned that I uh, am in control. Uh, what do you expect after teaching grade 8 for 10 years? You know, so <laughs> <coughs> That's pretty good. When I was first elected, they said, well, is it, uh, you know, what's it like being in Parliament? Of course, I was a caucus of one. I was down there all by myself. And I said, well, it's not a lot unlike my grade 8 classroom, except you always do know the grade 8s will grow out of it. <laughs> These guys, I'm not so sure. But it was good training ground. This hour has 22 minutes. You may think, you may hope that that really wasn't me. Well, it was. <laughs> Uh, you have to remember that I was a drama teacher also for 10 years. <laughs> I taught high school English in the public system. I taught grade 7 through 12. But uh, I also taught some drama and phys ed. <clears throat> and of course, given the opportunity, I wasn't flirting with them. They were flirting with me. They said they wanted to do this skit, flirting with the Reform Party, and Rick Mercer has a crush on Deborah Gray. I said, this should be a big seller. <laughs> when, he, when he phoned me from the airplane and said he was coming. And he says, well, I think, uh, you know, we, I want you to take me for a ride on your motorcycle. I said, I'd love to do that, but you're coming to the wrong city. My motorcycle is in Edmonton, and many of you saw that. That was not a publicity stunt. I have uh, ridden a bike and been a biker and had my own motorcycle since I was 16 years old, which is more than five years ago now. <laughs> As I have been biking for almost 30 years, and so when you saw me take Preston for a ride during the election campaign, that wasn't something just sort of cute that we thought might uh, get media attention. I am a biker, and, uh, and I probably still have the marks in my back from Preston being so terrified, just clinging on to me as we <laughs> rode around the circle there at the airport. But I said, I, I don't have a motorcycle for you to come on a ride with. He says, well, we'll just borrow one. So I said, sure, you just do that. Just let me know when you find one. Well, sure enough, they phoned a Honda shop the next morning when they got into Ottawa. Said, yes, we'd like to uh, borrow a Goldwing so Deborah Gray can ride it. And if you owned a Honda shop, you could just imagine what your response would be. No, I'm sorry, we don't lend out gold wings, sir. And he says, well, can we test drive one then? And they said, uh, no, no, not when you want to borrow it. We do not test drive them. So he says, well, I don't know what to do because we're here from uh, this hour is 22 minutes and we just need a motorcycle. So I'm sure the guy thought, this is a wing nut, and put on the uh, owner of the shop. And of course, he had this big, beautiful gold wing and said, who wants to ride this? And what's the story? Anyway, he came to Parliament Hill with his own uh, gold wing 1500. It was pouring rain out. It was kind of a Vancouver rain. It wasn't just coming down, but it was bouncing halfway up again. And it was just soaking wet. And when I told him that I, in fact, had a gold wing 1100, he says, ah, you'll have no problem riding my 1500. Uh, here you are. Have a great ride. So we tooled around Parliament Hill there, and it was good fun. But I couldn't believe that some man had enough faith to just say, oh, sure, honey, uh, you know, help yourself to my bike and uh, ride around on Parliament Hill. It was great. 
I, I have had an interesting political experience this last six months because, you know, I represented the rural, strictly rural, constituency of Beaver River for about eight and a half years in Parliament. Ray said I was elected in the spring of 89. My life turned upside down overnight. I had no idea what was in store for me. As you know, I served as a caucus of one on Parliament Hill as the only reformer, and that was quite an experience. I lived through Meech Lake, and I lived through Charlottetown, and I came to see you in the spring of 93 when I knew that there was an election coming. I had no idea what was going to happen in that election, and yet we got 52 members, and that was pretty exciting for me. I thought, that's not bad odds, eh? Uh, you, you go from one to 52, and who knows where we would be going next. But I didn't have to worry about that right then. I just needed to do the best job that all of us could do as the caucus of 52. During that last parliament, the electoral boundaries commissioners decided that they would redraw the maps and the folks in Calgary, because their population had grown, needed another federal seat, but Alberta's population had not grown enough to warrant another federal seat. So in other words, they needed a new city riding and they had to blitz a rural riding. That was about the long and short of it. And who do you think they picked? It was just the funniest darn thing. And uh, we had public meetings, of course, and uh, it was brought up, the coffee shop talk, that it looked like it was rather targeted, and the commissioners all took great exception to that. And I said, I'm not blaming anyone for anything, but it did seem passing strange <laughs> that, that this, uh, who had been the only reformer when that commission was set up, uh, that it was my writing. I had a very painful personal decision to make then, and that was, do I say to the two reformers, of course, by this time, you know, just two years ago, I was surrounded by reformers. And so do I say to them, well, fellas, I've been around for longer than you, uh, you know, the nice try, but uh, uh, this is my area, my turf. I didn't feel right about claiming turf wars, and uh, neither did they <laughs> feel right about me claiming turf wars. And so I wasn't sure if my political career was over. Should I go back teaching? Uh, should I spend uh, more time with this wonderful new husband that I had? That was pretty tempting. But Lou said to me, as we talked about it and prayed about it together, because this was a huge life decision, uh, what do we do about this? Should I run again? And Lou said to me one morning, uh, just before we were ready to get out of bed, we were lying in bed yakking, and he said, Deb, if we form government and you are not there, he said, I know you will always, always regret it. And so I just want to give you my blessing that I will continue to take you to the airport every Sunday afternoon and uh, spend my weeks alone and uh, keep the home fires burning and do the laundry and the dishes and the vacuuming and everything else uh, because we think this is where you are to be right now. And boy, I tell you, I sure appreciated that. It was great. But then, of course, the next question was, where do I run? It was a long, long series of events, but uh, in, the, in the final analysis, I uh, was offered to run in the constituency of Edmonton North, which was just literally across the highway from Beaver River. And so I was literally the girl next door. I didn't want to be looking like a parachute candidate. And so I ran in a city riding, and we did very well. We got about 4,300 votes more than the next guy. So we got the most number of marbles. So I was then proclaimed the Member of Parliament for Edmonton North. And you people helped in that. You gave a donation to our campaign. We started at minus $7,000 on my nomination night. And I thought, well, <laughs> it could be worse. It could have been 10, eh? You know? <laughs> but uh, they had committed to the national campaign. Uh, of course, they, they fought a, a recount in the last election because we only lost that by 202 votes in 1993. And so they had a recount, and they spent all their money on that. And then they committed $7,000 to the national advertising campaign. I thought that was a lot of faith. They had absolutely nothing. And yet they said, we believe in the national campaign, so we're going to chip in just as soon as the cash comes in. And we started on my nomination night. We raised about $7,000. So from then on, we were at zero and uh, had no place to go but up. And uh, we just want to say thank you uh, from all the Edmonton North people for your donation for our campaign. We really appreciated it and it did take us up and over the top. It was just wonderful. We raised a significant amount of cash during the election, and it was pretty exciting on the night of June 2nd. Not that just we had 52 members to keep what we were doing, but it went higher and higher and higher. And we are now Her Majesty's official opposition, and the separatists aren't, and I like that a whole lot. I just want to pay tribute to Ray Speaker also on behalf of our caucus. Ray, you have uh, been just a great support in Ottawa for our first term down there with the batch of MPs, and we really appreciated his experience, and it was nice to see Ingrid in town quite a bit of the time too. And uh, because I was the only vet in the reform caucus, I taught him everything I knew, but of course I, 
<laughs> which didn't take long. And then, uh, then of course, we turned it over to Ray, you know, who's been around for years and years and years. <laughs> so anyway, but Ray, uh, we really miss you down there, and we just wish you well. I know that it's fun for you to be back with Ingrid and on the farm. And Ingrid, I hope you think it's fun too.